isn't right. All right, but that is a conversation for another time. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, guys. When last we left off, uh, Thorlock Holmes here is trying to solve a couple of murder mysteries, one involving a clown, which seems to have coalesced into a bigger murder plot. And we've got a, a lead. A lead towards a cult of ball enthusiasts. So that's our current thing. Also, we're kind of in Baldur's Gate. I say kind of, because we haven't quite gotten all the way in there yet. We're on the outer edges outside of Baldur's Gate, I guess would be the most accurate way to put it. Oh, us is still out there. Poor us. All right, so in the Lower City's Elf Song Tavern, we got to get into the Lower City first before we can continue our investigation of the murders. So prior to that, we're going to do whatever else we can here in Sharessa's Caresses and whatnot. South Spain of Worms Crossing, that's what this is called, okay. And, oh, that's where Raphael is. And Kithrak Fall. There's a lot going on in Sharessa's Caress. The gods are watching me, because Chad is watching. Also, apparently Larian Studios put out a message that they are working on the next patch for this game, specifically to help performance issues in Act 3, which, based on the fact that we are hitting 40 FPS right now, sounds like a good thing. Because... Game's running a little sloppy at the moment. My room's key. Alright, let's talk to these here prostitutes. What's with the big underwear there? Tell me, am I beautiful? More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north sky. You are the golden dunes swept across the Kalim. You are the fruit of the forbidden palm. Soft on my skin, sweet on my tongue. You are my sin and salvation. I am I interrupting? Your parasite stirs, and you gaze at the nymph through the flaming fist's hungry eyes. Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your skin burns with her heat. What's... What's wrong, Jara? What are you... Wait! I know you! Whoever you think I am, you're mistaken. Your face. The Absolute has shown me. Jarl, what's going on? Who's this man? Uh-oh. Her head screams in agony. Change has come. Pustules boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. And suddenly... Silence. What's happening? What's happening is you should leave the room. Oh, God. 
Did a lot of people just get transformed or just her? Oh my god, the game is not running well right now. Another one. Outmaneuver them. Never a dull moment. I'm sorry. Why am I still cowering? Is it because I had to see all that from her point of view? That's not good. Counterspell, Psionic Backlash, hi -ya. What should I do? When I go... <laughs> what? That's not what I wanted you to do. Bye forever, pal. Get in there. What? Nani? Game? Incoming. <laughs> Why, game? Okay, there we go. Still breathing, despite everything. Hells. I'd heard tales of mind flayers. Talons sharp as daggers and tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Its blood shimmers like silver. Your client is dead. I thought you'd be a bit more upset. Who? Oh, yes. Jara. I will miss her coin, it's true. Though perhaps this is not what you meant. Free your mind of her. Let us look forward, never back. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens and your heart skips a beat. Insight failed. Well, I'm glad you're not dead. As am I. My thanks are as bountiful as your courage. Take these. Notters. May you have some comfort in bitter times. Be well. Be beautiful. We got Superior Elixir of All King Cultivation. As for that insight check, it was DC 10. And I rolled a 5. Rip. One moment. Forever emblazoned on my memories. I won't soon forget it. What's next, I wonder? If you talk? Anything? Hells. I oh, same thing. Players, talons sharp as I can't skip. Tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did justice to its but no tail did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Could have killed you and you're musing on its beauty? Blood. How could I help it? I don't regret its death, but I marvel that such a work of art could ever live. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens and your heart skips a beat. The woman's senses are heightened and her fire stoked. The mind flare is no mere curiosity, but an object of desire. Ah. Thing turned you on, didn't it? Why should I deny it? My urge is as natural as the grape upon the vine. But perhaps there are other flavors that might satisfy my palate. And what did you have in mind? Rapture. Close your eyes. And listen. Well, this seems interesting. All right. Eyes closed. Only darkness. Her voice shines through it, warmer than the sun, yet cooler than night. The all being. Here, there is no suffering. 
Here, you want for nothing. Here, you are anything. You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? Hmm. Let's go with contented. You are more than contented. You are at total peace. Your belly is full. Your mind rested. Your eyes bright. No more will you hear the clang of steel on steel. No more will you fear the cry of a wolf, the growl of an ogre. You are warm. You are safe. Your flesh shivers, your heart bursts. True ecstasy for one fleeting moment. Open your eyes. I remember you. And you'll remember me. Hmm. Rapture condition has plus one d6 bonus to attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws until the next long rest. More Neat. No wonder someone came over here. No wonder people come here in general. Give me strength. Investigate Elminster's library. Wait, hold on. Who's... Find the stern librarian, Fion. Okay. Just a Baldur's Gate quest. All right, what do we got? Yoshimo is willing. Whoops, I meant to read that. A revisionist sensation novella with a blurb. In this alternate history sex adventure, the one and only Yoshimo does not betray the ball spawn. In fact, he does almost anything the ball spawn asks for, very readily. One Night in Nashkel. The cover of this pulp erotica describes the contents. After months of imprisonment in the Nashkel mines, Enchanter Zan cannot bear his solitude any longer, and decides to pleasure himself with the only companion he has, his sentient sword, the Moonblade. Ah, <clears throat> oh, my guiding moonlight, you were by my side all along. Rules of the reading room. Anyone caught pleasuring themselves in the library will be tethered to the bookcase of chained books. Any wizards caught examining this special collection without express permission will be commanded to read aloud to the whole library the passage they were enjoying. Anyone breaking the silence of the library will be promptly gagged. Overlapping lines. This publication describes itself in the introduction. A semi-annual magazine of drawings and tales telling stories of famed heroes of Baldur's Gate by their admirers. Open submissions from the public. That's not erotica. Uh, how can I get off to that? Green flare leather outfit. Black flare leather outfit. Strapped choker leather ensemble. Minimalist leather binding getup that clings to the skin and creaks just the slightest bit when you move. All right, I'm game. How's it look? How about on Shadowheart? Mm, the ass doesn't look as nice. That's the big thing. How about on Asterion?
How about Carlock? Ooh, looks really good on Carlock. You know what? We'll keep it on Carlock. That works. Go, Team Leather! A dog collar. Smells a bit rusty, but looks stylish nonetheless. Finn's journal. He's getting worse. The whispers, the night terrors, the blood. I know he's hiding something, and the others in the flophouse know it too. I've seen how they look at them. How they look at me. They're scared of him, and I can't blame them. I am too. Or maybe it's Fionn for this one. We found Fionn's journal in her pleasure room. She seems terrified about something happening to someone dear to her and scared that the patrons of the Flophouse will have noticed. Maybe we'll find answers there. Even if you had it, what in the nine hands would you do with it? Think of it. The one that got a thay, the text written on the back of this smut advertises it. A slow-paced enemies to lovers tale featuring a bitter archwizard of thay and his nemesis, a pure-hearted, muscled berserker. The Warrior of Love. The Companion of Smutty Tales advertises itself on the back. A paladin of Suna gets a summon from their goddess. A mission to lie with someone from every town in the Sword Coast to prove their devotion to love. Now that's a goddess I'd worship. This comedy of errors centers around the butler, Vincent Raspington, who, though he is a silly dragonborn with stiff manners and a generally baffled attitude to the goings-on of fine, fair ladies and their gentlemen, ends up going arse over tea kettle into extremely erotic situations with the local nobility. Needless to say, he's unprepared for it. There's a particularly good sequence in which Vincent, a seven-foot-tall dragonborn, must pretend to be a shy little gnome named Missy Wimblesnatch during a banquet. Gaffaw, fnar, hee hee, ho hum, etc. The Devil's Den. Well, I wonder who's going to be in the Devil's Den. Devil's Den. Yep, that's it. Kithrak Voss is here. Hear me, devil. I will do whatever it takes. Give you anything you ask. There is only one thing in this world that I desire. You do not have it. And you never will. You must help me, Raphael. For the sake of my people. Hush now, Voss. These guests may not know it yet, but they want the same thing that you do. And unlike you, they have something of value to offer in return. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must Hold on. hear of it. Find me below in the tap room. I want... I want to swap Karlak out here for Lechelle. Or Lazelle. Lechelle. For Lazelle, because we're doing gith stuff, right? And then we'll swap Karlak back in when we're doing a uh, uh, Glorian, Gorgarian, the big bad. Have to keep going. Again, really hoping that they add some sort of quality of life to swapping partners. Men, women, children, all barred from entry. A damn travesty. A decade ago, Baldur's Gate would have welcomed any and everyone seeking refuge. Who would take in these souls, if not the Jewel of Baldurin? Baldur's Gate was a safe refuge when I left it. This must be Gortash's doing. As long as Gortash is in charge, they'll be left shivering at the gates. All part of the plan, of course. Step one. Create an army and order it to march on the city. 
Step two, shut the gates in the name of security. Step three, bask in the applause. Gortash hasn't made Baldur's Gate safe. He's made it a prison. And when his army breaks through, the people will have nowhere to run. To make this city a safe haven, we'll need to bathe Gortash and his allies in their own blood. It seems Grand Duke Stelmane's been murdered. Did you know her at all? I met her twice. The first time, I was a boy of seven or eight at a banquet in the Flaming Fist's honor. One look and I was smitten. Chestnut hair that flowed behind her like willow fronds as she floated from one room to the next as if carried by clouds. The second time, Stelmane was different. Even with the aid of a cane, each step she took was a struggle. Every word she spoke took great physical effort. A stroke victim? I asked father later. No, he said. A stroke survivor. No perception. Gone before her time, sounds like. What a tragedy. Not a tragedy. A calculated cruelty. Think about it. My father was tadpoled. Stelmane is dead. The people are frightened and the council's in disarray. To exert control, you must first sow chaos. A tyrant strategy, as father would say. These murders aren't random acts. Someone powerful is guiding the killer's hand, and the city is made weaker for it. Good talk, Will. Good talk. There is Karlak. There she is. Karlak, I need you to take a sit down for a minute. Soldier? Oh, come on. Oh, fuck. Lizelle, we have gith business. Get in my party. Inconceivable that we would seek release from one tadpole only for you to commune with another. I chide you if my mind were not consumed by the sight of Orpheus within his domed prison. The Prince of the Comet lives, but make no mistake. I can see the change in you, feel the parasite worming its way through you even further. You have invited your own misery. I will not break our alliance for it, but I will not condone it. Really, you can see the change? Are you sure? Uh, join me. It is done. Are you sure you can see the change in me? Are you action, sure, Lazelle? Also, it looks like you have a level up. Simple fighter level up. Nothing going on here. We gain Indomitable. Whenever you fail a saving throw, you can roll again. There we go, now we've got an actual level up. Okay, we gained uh, improved combat superiority. Now my superiority dice are 1d10. And two more maneuvers. Uh, which maneuvers was I looking at that I thought looked good? Did we have sweeping attack before? Seems good. Grant an ally eight temp hit points, boosting the resolve. Eh. Menacing attack can frighten. Make an attack that deals additional 1t10. On hit, select which friendly creature will gain half its movement speed. It will not provoke a top of opportunities. Goading. It's not bad. Fainting's pretty good for having advantage. Might take the fainting attack. Yeah, how about that? So we'll gain the fainting attack and the sweeping attack.
Make that helmet go bye-bye. There you go. No one stopped me yet. Hand it over. Much more than your fate and mine rests on it. All right, now we'll go talk to the devil. What in the nine hells would you do with it? Think a little, Captain Boss. He can be set free. I know he can be set free. Talking about Orpheus. Howdy, friends. You must hear me, devil. I will do whatever it takes. Give you anything you ask. There is only one thing in this world that I desire. You do not have it, and you never will. The Kithrak? What deal would he make with this devil? You must help me, Raphael, for the sake of my people. Hush now, Voss. These guests may not know it yet, but they want the same thing that you do. And unlike you, they have something of value to offer in return. Lazel, Talak Magir. The devil holds the key to freeing the Gith people. Right here, right now. You could seal our fate. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must hear of it. Find me below in the tap room once you're loosed from his claws. I'm glad you came. Not to my door, not yet, but to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. Uh huh. For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. What did you do? I feel empty. I gave you back your privacy by shutting that illithid in your pocket out of your mind. It can't hear us. All right, then speak freely. Why have you brought me here? I brought you here because I'm true to my word, and I can make all of this tadpole business go away, which means you and your lovely friends can remain blessedly free of tentacles. Unless some have already sprouted in places I can't see. Let us speak plain. I'll admit, you've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far. But no matter how far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. At best, it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you, and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. You have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. The prism? In a manner of speaking. But it's the one inside the prism that you need, not the illithid, the gift. I can give you the means to break him free. Speak, devil. We're listening. Mm-hmm. Go on, then. The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope, even now. 
Quite convenient that you happen to have exactly what I need. Isn't it just? And it's even more convenient that you can give me exactly what I want in return. And I'm supposing you want my soul in exchange for the hammer. You really do think highly of yourself. My sights are set on something much more valuable than your soul. <laughs> Succulent, though it would be. I want the crown that dominates the elder brain. And you, Lazel of Kalir, want to free the forgotten prince, do you not? I want nothing more. Then it is settled, is it not? A crown for a hammer. A bargain of a lifetime, Lazel of Kilir. <laughs> oh, this would be the worst idea. To give him a crown of domination that can take over an elder brain? Oh, no, no, no. But, tell me, why are you so eager to get a hold of this crown? Power. Ancient and full of wonder. I have craved it ever since the Archwizard Casas created it long centuries ago and brought doom to the Empire of Netheril. That was the great age of humanity. And Netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization. I was there the day it all fell apart. Entire cities plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings. The screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> It was not a happy meeting. And Cassus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils and that I could use that crown to unite the nine under one archdevil supreme. Me. <clears throat> kind of wish I brought Gale here, too. Because Gale would have something to say about this, too. Now, there's a couple of things I want to say about this. Number one... That crown better be... real powerful if it want, if Raphael wants to be able to elevate himself up from... I don't know, what level is he? Maybe 12, 13? Up to... the status to take over the Nine Hells. Because there are literal gods down there. <laughs> God devils and all that. Number two, if the crown does have that much power, you're not necessarily the person I want to give it to because... Well, despite all your very pleasant attitude towards us, you're clearly scheming and memeing a bunch behind the scenes. Three, uniting the Nine Hells is terrible. Because it's not like devils are particularly good. The whole reason that the Nine Hells aren't able to overrun the status quo of the world is generally because they're always in conflict with each other in some way, shape, or form. So yeah, that's my three points on why this is not a good idea.
What makes you think you would succeed in using the crown where Carsus couldn't? I am no mortal! And I do not fail. And if you don't fail, how come you didn't get a hold of the crown way back then? The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited, ever watching for more than a thousand years for a mistake, a mishap, a misadventure. And these chosen, who have caused you so much trouble accidentally, did me a favor. They brought the crown back into play. I gotta say, it sounds like Mephistopheles probably realized something very important about what the crown does to its wearer, and said, Oh yeah, I probably shouldn't put this on. Hey everyone, come laugh at the humans who made this and thought it was a good idea to wear it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but Raphael wasn't laughing. He was raging! How did they come to get in possession of the crown anyway? Through the aid of a diabolist, somebody capable of opening a portal to the hells. Deep in the hells. They must have raided Mephistopheles' vault. Impressive, I must admit. But they'll be dead soon. If you don't kill them, the Elder Brain will. It doesn't have feelings in the way you'd understand them. <laughs> but it seems rather angry. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flare in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. See, that's the you thing. if take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the Hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? Skvar! We should do as the Devil asks. The Prince of the Comet must rise again. Lazelle, please. I understand that you are... not the brightest bulb in the bunch, but come on. Come on, you need to understand a fleece when you see it. This is the biggest fleece in history. <laughs> Chat, I will gladly give you a million dollars in the future if you give me a mere pittance of 10,000 today and promise to be subscribed to me for a lifetime. Seems like a good deal, doesn't it? Why don't you take the deal? <laughs> Seems good to me, Corpa. Yeah, chat, it's an investment. Come on, guys. $10,000 in my pocket right now. Go ahead. You'll make a million. Eventually. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. I really don't trust Raphael.
I'd rather not. How short-sighted. Much better to put it into the right hands. Hands that will ensure it is removed from this world. For how long, Raphael? And it's the only way you can ensure that you remain part of this world. Yes, but Raphael, I can control the crown. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you were serious? The crown has laid low all who attempt to harness its power. Archwizards, emperors, gods. It would tear you apart. So Raphael, if it can, if it can lay low gods, what makes you think you've got a chance, buddy? No deal, Raphael. I'm walking. I won't stop you. But time is running out. So, don't stay away for long. If you see reason, I'll be here, waiting. Right up to the moment the world ends. He kicked me out. The means to loosing the Prince of the Comet was within our grasp. And you refused it. Why? Because what if we just break in and take the hammer? I wanted to follow the open valley, the easy way out. You chose the bramble path. I'm annoyed by it. And I admire you for it. We must speak with Voss. Then we find our way to Raphael's House of Hope. We'll take the Orphic Hammer and use it to smash the true heir's bonds. Yisk Githkar Tafki crash it. The Githyanki will be free. I want to say this. Of course she gets off from it. Well, yeah, of course. I wanted the easy way out and you chose the hard way? Oh man, that gets me hard way. I mean, what? <clears throat> See, it's simple corpa. If we have the hammer for free, then we get the crown for free, too. Taps forehead. Doesn't make any sense. No, because if we if we enter into a contract with the devil, we will be in forced in binding magic, and if we do not fulfill our contractual obligations, which would be to hand deliver the crown to him... Well, you saw what happened to Will. They turned him into goo. That uh, probably happened to us. Also, I want to head to camp, because Gale seemed like he was interested in what we were talking about. I thought I lost you. Something was blocking me from hearing your thoughts. It was Raphael. Raphael? Well, thank you for your honesty. Of course, I should have known the devil would come sniffing. The stench of impending chaos is irresistible to them. And what did he want with you? He wants that crown that's on the brain. Giving a devil what he wants sounds like a brilliant idea. Exactly. And what did he offer you in return for bringing it to him? Does it matter? I said no. I am glad you had the sense to turn him down. But it certainly does matter. Anything that threatens our alliance threatens our chances of defeating the Elder Brain. So I ask you again. What were the terms of the deal he offered you? Well, he wants the crown the brain's wearing and offered me the means to free Orpheus. An horrendous deal. Imagine a crown of sufficient power to dominate an elder brain atop a devil's head. You would be trading one apocalyptic event for another. Thank you for telling me. And for rejecting him. 
And now, we must be doubly on our guard. The devil is like a cockroach. No matter what you do to it, it will always come back. I doubt this will be the last time you are approached. I trust that you will continue to remember who is really on your side. Without my protection, you cannot defeat the Elder Brain. You cannot even get close to it, no matter what the devil whispers in your ear. See, the real problem I have with uh, taking the deal is mostly just I don't trust Raphael any bit. But the other problems that come up, come up are very evident, such as if I do take the deal, will Orpheus even be kind enough to be on our side? Can we convince him to, or is he just going to suddenly attack us? He's probably just going to attack us because we have, you know, worm in our brain. Hey, Gale, you look certainly... you certainly look magical today. What's up, dog? You made a good decision refusing that devil's contract. We'll speak more on this later, but suffice it to say for now, that crown is vital to our purpose here. About that night we spent together. Please. There is little more to be said on the subject. The best thing you and I can do is march on towards whatever awaits us. The end may be close. Time to reap what we have sown. The hat looks cool on Gale. The brim pulled down on it makes it look mysterious. There is no deal with the devil that I would willingly partake in. Declining Raphael showed great wisdom. By the way, have you heard from Thaniel since we moved on? I have. He speaks to me during my nightly meditations. He is well. And Oliver also. At times they are one, and at others they divide. Easier for playing, perhaps. And the land thrives also. I doubt you would recognize it. Perhaps one day, you and I can both return and see it for ourselves. Cool. So, no deal with Raphael. I wouldn't want to give him the satisfaction anyway. Come to bask in the glow of the Moon Maiden's sword? Be most welcome. Keeping very well, I hope. I wonder what happened between you and your father, Catherick. I mourn the man I knew. He was wonderful. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother rescued. Okay, yeah, we did hear this. Next, he I found by he's gone now. But I suppose the man I knew died when I died. Okay, yeah. So we've got their conversations. Meow. I heard meow. I mean, there is a child in here with a cat. Useful as the hammer would have been, I'm relieved we're not in the devil's debt. Once his kind has you under their thumb, they won't ever let you go. Not easily, that's for sure. I'm really surprised I didn't have any warlock options for refusing Raphael, considering there's, you know, already a fiend that I am contracted with. Raphael thought he could outsmart us, but there are other ways to get the Orphic Hammer, guaranteed. We know he keeps it in the House of Hope. If we can find a Diabolist, they could help us make our way in. Hell yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna steal shit. Um... Hi. It's me, Yenna. You remember me, right? You were really nice to me before, and, um, my mum hasn't come back yet. She might come later. I don't think she's coming. Could we maybe stay here? 
What harm? She's little, won't take up much space, or make much of a dent in our provisions. No kids allowed, come back in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick answer. Why do I feel like Yen is going to try and take us for a ride? Oh well, whatever. You can stay, kid. Yes! You've got a fire and everything! I can cook really good! Whatever you want! Thank you, thank you! The screams of robbery? That's fine. Not a huge deal. If this winds up with her trying to steal from us, then it winds up with her trying to steal from us. And if not, then not. Besides, she's a child. How much can she realistically carry anyway? The great devil grows sloppy. He makes his offer, but only after telling us where to find what we seek. The Orphic Hammer. I suppose we will have to see if this House of Hope is open to visitors. Hell yeah. See, that's, that's Jahira for you. Experienced adventurer like, oh, the devil told us where to get what we want? What an idiot. Raphael must be raging we didn't take his deal. Luckily, his desperation made him careless. Did you hear what he said? The hammer's in his house of hope. If we wanted, we could steal it right out from under his nose. Granted, it wouldn't be easy. Devils guard their treasure by especially lethal means. Hmm. What do you suggest? We would need to find a diabolist. One worth their salt should be able to get us into that devil's lair. One last trip to Avernus. At least it'd be for a good reason, right? See, I'm perfectly fine with doing that. Not only not only would we go there to get the Hammer of Orphis, but it would also give us the opportunity to raid his house for whatever other magical goodies he surely is stashing away. And I love magical goodies. If you haven't looked in my stash, it's pretty clear. I love magical goodies. Meow. Hey, Starion, take a sit down for a second. Yes? Oh, darling. Uh, it's sad. Uh... Carlac, come here. I need you to talk to that cat. Help for your thoughts. Hey, ho. La, la, la. Talk to the kitty. Wait, you can't talk to the kitty? Why can't we talk to the kitty? We can throw the kitty. <laughs> but I will not. That would be rude. Copper for your thoughts. Really? Oh. What path lies before me? Probably should have been playing a dragonborn instead. Yes. Honestly, I would have been more happy to play a Dragonborn if the Dragonborn's, like, breath weapon racial stuff wasn't terrible. But it's pretty terrible. It's very underwhelming. We go into Lagville. They really do need an optimization patch here for Act 3. Especially when Act 1 and 2 ran immaculately. Just perfect. No problem. Maybe a little bit of dips in Act 2 towards the end inside the big tower. But 
Act 3 is just struggling. Struggling to run. Any sense? It will when you bet the drown. So they're just not going to do anything about that body. They're just going to let it sit there. Okay, then. We gotta make sure we talk to all the rest of the, uh, prostitutes here, too. Ah, that must be the Drow Twins. Alright, first, let's talk with Kithrak Voss. Voss, friend to the Comet. Lazel of Kalir, warrior of warriors. Tell me you took the Devil's deal. Tell me you will free Gith's heir. Not interested with pacting with devils, Voss. Shkaketh! Orpheus will be free. There is no cost too high to unshackle my people. You realize Raphael wants something way bigger. Who knows what chaos he might sow? No more than Vlakith will sow in Tunarath and beyond. No more than the Geich will sow across every plain. There is nothing yes, I won't more. Do, nothing I won't give to free Orpheus from the prison. The marks I bear are proof enough of that. But you, you are the one who carries the astral prism. You are the one who must free the prince. Find a way to retrieve the hammer and free Orpheus from the prism. I will assemble his remaining honor guard and plan our next actions. Together, we will yet free the true heir of Gith's blessed empire. He will free us from Vlakith and lead our Kithraki against the Geich. Iztik, I will wait in the underground. Seek me when you have the hammer in hand. Orpheus sent the table before and his guard attacked. Won't he attack if we free him? The Prince of the Comet aches for Gith Yankee liberation more than he abhors Geich. He might seethe when you free him. He might gnash his teeth and slander your name, but he will see reason. I promise you. Any idea where Raphael might keep his Orphic hammer? A devil of Raphael's stature does not simply make camp on the shores of the Styx. He will have made a sanctuary for himself, a lavish one too, one that caters to his many vices. The House of Hope. We must find a way in. The House of Hope, you say? I couldn't ask for a name more fitting. Every house has an entrance, Istik. Even those in the Hells. You must find it. You are wasting your time. And mine. Our true enemy is the Elder Brain. Focus your mind there. Yeah, I don't have too much plan to free Orpheus, to be honest. So you're saying it might be the dynamic crowds and there's an option for it. Okay. Let's see. A good rumple. Maybe it's under video. Dynamic crowds. There we go. How about we turn that off and see if that helps a little bit. I'm assuming it won't help too much, though. Hey! You paid Raphael a visit. I want to hear all about it. 
I put it on especially as for you. Take it off. Doesn't seem to have made much in Sorry, impact at all. If anything, it might have made things worse. No, it seems about the exact same. Unless that's the kind of thing you have to restart the game for it to affect, which is also possible. Damn, Hoots! That new batch burns stronger than a pit fiend's fist. I'll take that as a compliment. Take it however you want. But I'll be having my usual from now on. Oi! You must have slipped by me earlier. Raphael's very disappointed you turned him down. And who are you exactly? Oh, I forget, we've never met. I've had my eyes and ears on you so long, we feel like old friends. Carilla is my name. I'm Raphael's assistant, shall we say. He's gutted, you know. Had such high hopes for you. And did he try to tell, tell you to try and win me over? Cheeky. We might be in a brothel. But I'm not that kind of gal. You should reconsider, though. The boss might be a devil, but he'll treat you more honestly than anyone else in the city. And what exactly is it you do for him? Plenty. But right now, I have one job. You. I'm talking to you openly. Mortal to mortal. And I'm begging you to sign the contract. If the brain wins, the Illithid Empire returns and worlds you've never even dreamed of will die. Raphael can stop it. He wants to. And he knows how. You're the key. You always have been. And then why make demands of me instead of just helping? Actually, I don't believe a devil cares about the fate of the world. I won't pretend he's an altruist, but he's looked at the balance sheet. No world, no souls. And it's hard to get leverage on an illithid. They make terrible clients. Yeah, still not convinced. I'm going to stop the brain without his help. I doubt it. But even if you do, you won't survive the fight. I'd reconsider if I were you. Scaring your regulars off, Sworn. This is new guy. That blacksmith was paying me to use the clamping button. Ah. Hello. Hello? My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask, and we can grant you a moment. Of pleasure. Don't be shy. How did you end up here? Drow aren't particularly known for this kind of environment. I used to work as a courtesan back home, and my sister as an artisanal masseuse. But men are treated like dogs by the Underdark's matriarchs, so we fled. We found surfaces crave the body of a drow like a drug. Life is easy in our line of work. Ah, oh, fair point. Well, as long as you're here of your own free will. Life is prosperous. I'm much happier kissing the many lips of the surface than tending a field or manning a shop. Well, hey, glad you found a place that you feel safe. I'd have to restrain myself far more than any play bindings do if I worked in another field. This is a place where I can be myself boundlessly. 
There are so many who come to me speaking of a fixation that no one else has ever been able to share with them. And never will again. A once-in-a-lifetime moment of passion. Every day. What could be better? Don't you want to try it? Trust me, you don't want to miss my signature Mezzo Baranzan love trick. And is that your partner with you? What a gorgeous couple. Perhaps we could come to an agreement. I see swinging. What kind of agreement are we talking about here? We want both of you, silly, at the same time. Well, it's a fascinating prospect. I'd like you all to myself, at least the first time. Uh... Is I feel the same way towards Shadowheart or them? <laughs> I feel the I'm same glad. way? All right. Provided we survive, there's plenty of nights yet to come. Well, I thought those two might have a side quest for me, but they're just a, a wholesome little couple of drow siblings that like to bang. Queen Roll the Despoiler. Oh, it's a demon. You can stare as much as you like. We can dance if you want to. We can dance if you want to. If you want to. Why does she sound like a British Valley girl? Monsieur Chapeau. Enjoy the fiddling. Throw a few coins our way and let us play on into the night. How do I throw money at him? How do I make it rain? Actually, making it rain would hurt in this world. All Everything's gold coins and shit like that. Oh, I see. Staring. Chat, you can stare in if you like. I'll be damned, I thought at least one of those would have some sort of side quest for me, but nope, they're just prostitutes you can hire. Your pleasure is mine, sweeting. Alright, Queen Renala calling me a sweeting. Twins, Basil! Twins! Frago's Flophouse. Twitch Chat Cockhouse. Wait, Hoots Hooligan? Why, hello, lover. Did I not speak to that Hoots Hooligan? Oh, wait. Your Hoots Hooligan, there you go. Uh, uh. Now, that there's a face I'd remember if I'd seen it. Welcome to Charesse's Caress. What can Hoots do for you, stranger? You got a taste for ale, I reckon. Or maybe... Ah, forget it. My new brew could drop you in the wink of a spectator's eye. Oh, that's a good sales pitch. What's the story of this place? Charest Caress, the Mamsel's brainchild. Wet your tongue, soak your skin, scratch your itch. Get the attention you want and avoid the attention you don't. Bet a barkeep in this place hears all sorts of stories. My business is slinging tankards, not hoarding secrets. I'd like to keep it that way. Oh, fair enough. All right, uh... Time for some constitution checks, chat. 
Let's see if we have the iron gut. Your new brew sounds potent. Gimme. Don't know about that, chum. Hoots Hooch packs a stronger wallop than all ten of my knuckles. Could beef you up, sharpen your tongue, or knock you out cold. No telling till the first drop hits your gullet. Ooh. Gimme. Yeah. The man knows what he wants. Gimme. First one's on the house. So, don't come bawling to me if your big toes fall off or your tongue coils in a knot. Let me see what else you got. Have a look. You're not carrying any money? I received Hoots Hooch. Yay. A new invention of Charessa's caress, bartender Hoots. Like being decked in the sobriety. Amulet of the Drunkard. While wearing this amulet, you regain two or uh, 2d4 hit points per turn while drunk. Per turn, wow. Additionally, increase the duration of your inebriation by five rounds. <laughs> Donning this necklace causes the room to sway and tip. Or maybe it was already swaying. Whatever, time for another pint. Coffee, Dacus Tar. This coffee was brewed in the Amnian style. Strong, bitter, with a hint of spice. Milkies. Thin and weak. This milk smells and tastes of a barn. You can get all kinds of drinks here. I see, so... If I was running... I, I wonder if you can be like a drunken master monk in this game. If I was running someone that wants to be drunk all the time, then this would be a great place to come for stuff. All set, are you? Here you go. Not for communal use, it seems. Best show some respect. Or some more cunning. Oh, this must be like a... Maybe a storage house or a vault or something, basically. Okay. Or a kitchen, even. I can always go there later if I feel like it. Get your seafood here, chat. You know, chat, I'm on a bit of a seafood diet. I see food, and I eat it! Ah. <laughs> Laugh at my dad jokes. Only if my people extract them. The only other cure is the blade. Okay. Wonderful. Swear to God, if you don't laugh at my dad jokes, chat, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Looks like we're going to need to go upstairs to talk to people. Continue this quest line. Still further upstairs, really? What if they build a machine that can drink points? Put <laughs> after bloody city out of jobs, that. <laughs> I like this guy. ladder up. <clears throat> so, why am I uh, investigating here?
Okay. Meh. Anything in here? Nope. And through the wardrobe. Oh, well, I'll take those. A Guide to Avernus, One Hellish Holiday. This book provides an overview of Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells, for the discerning interplanar traveler. The sections on geography and inhabitants repeat much of the known lore about the Blood Wars, battlefields, and combatants. The section detailing the politics of the planes is strung with asterisks, qualifiers, and addendums charting the ever-shifting chain of command beneath Archduke Zariel and her many commanders rise meteorically in and fall equally from her favor. in these vials. Yuck. Yeah. These tunnels were full of shapeshifters. Father Logan's name is written here too. Okay, I'm guessing maybe it actually wants me to talk to people in here. Either that or... Being really weird. You're the only one up here, so let's go down here and see if we can talk to more patrons in the bar. This adventurer lock is rubbish. Should have listened to me. Maybe you, Molivar. It is you. Most definitely not anyone else. The salutations and hello and whatnot. What do you know about Fionn Goldgrind? Fionn? One of Mamzelle's girls. Who laughs like a star's twinkle. <laughs> Not seen her for a ten day. Ten days and four bells to be precise. Not that I'm counting. She's gone missing. Odd, don't you think? Missing? Well, I hadn't thought her missing. Just not here. Or elsewhere. Oh. Well, I suppose that's like missing. But with extra words. This man's got a negative three in intelligence. The who's on the loose got hold of her? Oh, goodness, no. It's too horrible to imagine. Boy, do I feel like he knows more than he's letting on. This place is real shabby. But at least folk don't look at you funny in here. Need anything? Got nothing I really want to buy. Pleasure doing business. Sup, Nesbit. There's that sweet mug. I'm looking for Fionn Goldgrind. Can you tell me what happened Fionn? or anything about her? Poor lass. Works her ass off for the Mumsel, but don't get much in return. Not seen no mug for a carp sage. I figure she'd gone up the road while the going was good. Kill her on the loose. Cult army marching wee way. Been thinking I might scarp her too. Hmm, no info. I don't mind it. Honestly. Which means we're getting a real It's not even any god's damn. Not even any god's damn dragons here to slay. What kind of a fucking adventurous place is this without a fucking dragon? What if? Okay, and he's got nothing to say. Confuses me for a member of staff. I'd probably break his nose. Good boy. My eye. Damn. Hey. 
Well, my first thought is to rummage around in people's chests. That's just the thief in me. You've been spotted fiddling with that lo Damn it, why'd he turn around right then and there? What if? He's not looking. You've been pulling all night to keep watch. I know you have. I don't Honestly. Well I do. Which means we're getting a real room. God of the oppressed. My eyes. Oh, Fion's chest. Well hey, what do you know? Cancel. Don't don't look at me. I'm just chilling. Don't you worry, bud. And if a patron confuses me for a member of the staff, I could probably break the rules. Good. Maybe this if everyone else minds their business, I'll be fine. Best be on my way. All right. In her chest is diary. That's all. I want to read it. A new mostly blank book with only a handful of diary entries. It's not... I've not written a diary before. Dashkent said it might do wonders to settle my mind. Maybe distance is just what happens when the weans grow up. But it's still hard. My boys never left the nest before, really. Never cared to. I knew he's older than most who still live with their mums, but I've never cared about that, and I don't think he has either. It's just... He acts so differently, too. Secretive, rude, brash. Gods, I don't know what... About this, maybe Dashkent was wrong. I don't feel better at all. Aha! Maybe. We found Fionn's diary in a chest in Frigo's flop house. She seems to be very concerned about her son's change in demeanor and sudden tendency to be away from home. Now, what if we talk to people? There's also traveler's chests here, which may be hers. Dashkent's chest. Wait, that's the other one. Risk being in open Best behave yourself. I am. Confuses me for a member of staff. I'd probably break his nose. Good one. Can't keep me out. Can't keep me out. A letter. A brimmed hat. Softer than a whisper. This calls for careful footwork. I don't need any attention right now. Now, did he see me? What if? He didn't see me. Good. <laughs> I'm just doing work, man. Spots. Look at me go. Look at these squats. All right. Time to skulk about. Don't you appreciate a good squat when you see one, sir? They'll catch a break. All right, letter. The eyes of Sir Frego Atuna only. Greetings and so forth. I am writing to you in the most auspicious day, marking my sixth year of gainful employment in your service. I have enjoyed and believe I've performed admirably each moment of these duties, and hence, I have a simple request. An increase in salary of one gold piece, six silver, and nine copper per month. This has been precisely calculated to augment my rather humble lifestyle in accordance to the rising cost of living. And a little bit of extra money for nice bread. I do so love a good loaf. 
It would perhaps behoove me to mention that Charessa's Caress are offering very competitive rates for janitorial staff at the moment, if that all at all sways your decision. Though I am certain your very generous soul needs no such encouragement. Yours in health and sickness, as per my terms of my contract, Dashkent Mullivar. Well, that didn't give me as much info as I would have liked. Not everyone subscribed. Oh, why'd he suddenly turn around? That's a friendly looking shadow. My eye. Damn priest. Nothing. Nothing in there. This pouch. Nothing. Nothing in there. Another step forward. Alright. It is you, most definitely not anyone else. Okay, Dashkent has no more info for us. There's that sweet mug. Okay. Be more open to traders. Not really any more info here about what to do next. something I'm missing in that upstairs room I guess maybe because it's still got it's still got the men the marker here and it says up here so I am assuming that I missed something here maybe she's been she was a dwarf, so maybe she got stuffed inside a crate or something. Well, I'll take some thieves' tools. Check that. Into some blood has pooled on the wooden floor. Let's investigate. PC ten. We're good. Thank you, headband of intellect. You notice the blood source. A body hidden under the bed. Oh shit. Pull out the body. It's Fion Goldgrind. Oh no. She did. To the best of wives and mothers, a tarnished ring engraved with the following to Fion, the best of wives and best of mothers. Flower shaped key with a five scratched into the petals. I know his key. 
It's identical to the one held by that corpse in the tunnels. We should tell Mumzel Amira. Yep. Mumzel, I regret to inform you that one of your workers is dead. There we go. Our investigation paid off, chat. Yeah, yeah, there won't be another warning. You caught me snooping, but I needed to. I found a dead body, after all. It's got private rooms, music, and all-round pleasant folks. Where when you met the drow? And it's a Your pleasure is mine, sweeting. I have found Fionn's corpse. She's been murdered. Murdered? Ye gods, the poor thing! Oh, by the mother of cats, I pray she didn't suffer. I'll miss that face. Else, the regulars will miss her more. They swarmed her like honeybees at the hive. Oh. Losing Fion slashed a big hole in my coin purse. I should get to replacing her. Woman's dead and you're more concerned about money? Sweeting. This is Baldur's Gate. I've seen more murders than a butcher's right eye. There'll be time for tears. Cruel as it is, I must turn my mind to business. Or, more precisely, the lack of it. Fair point. Got anything to spare for me? I have little coin, but I offer sin in abundance. Talk with the drow twins in the tap room. They're legends among the regulars, almost myths. Tell them they will gift from the mamzelle, and let them show you why. Anything else on your mind, sweeting? That's all. All right, well. We have completed this. She gifted us some private time with the Drow Twins that work for her. We cannot find them in the tap room. 